which I'll be doing uh, kitchen cabinets, but not right now. I don't have anything to do. But I'm going to go over the method of what you need to do to do your kitchen cabinets the right way to get them to last and the uh, process and also the materials that you should be using to do them. So if you want to actually paint your cabinets, if you have wood cabinets and you want to paint them, um, here's what you have to do to do that. It's a bit of a process um, and it's, you know, it's expensive if you have it done. It's a lot cheaper than replacing the cabinets. But um, anyway, let me just kind of go over this, what has to be done. First thing you have to do is you have to remove all the grease from the cabinets. If there's any bit of grease on the cabinets or any like furniture polish or anything like that, it has to be cleaned off. And how we usually do that is actually use uh, non-rinse TSP or uh, sometimes if it's really bad I'll use something called crud cutter it's another uh, cleaner to clean the cabinets and uh, after we've done all the cabinets uh, with that then we'll go through and lightly sand them now a lot of people think you have to sand off the finish um, and the, the answer to that is no you do not have to sand off all the finish all you have to do is just scuff this down just a little bit so a couple strokes with a bit of 220 and then usually what I'll do is follow that with a scratchy pad or a scotch bright. Well, you know, the same thing, but sometimes they're not scotch bright as a 3M product. So scratchy pad, chase after it with a nice scratchy pad or a scotch bright. And uh, if you know what that is, it's basically usually you use them to do your dishes and stuff like that, but they have them for painting. So you go through and use a scotch bright, clean them all. Then what you have to do is you have to take all your doors off. Now when you take the doors off, you should be numbering each one of the hinges as you take them off and put a piece of tape over the number so that you know exactly which door and which hinge you, you took off to get to that door. Otherwise, when you go put them back on, the doors aren't going to shop properly and you have to readjust all the hinges. It could take several hours to do. So um, then you take your doors and you set them out on sawhorses outside now the trick is is what kind of a product do you use over them some people say oh yeah well I just paint over that and absolutely do not just put paint on your cabinets you have to use a special primer I'll show you exactly which one that is a lot of people will use like a spray lac aqua lac a water lacquer primer no, uh -uh. doesn't adhere properly. Let me show you the best primer that you can use. It's a little more work, but it's the right way to do it. So the primer you use is shellac, about a Zinsser bin, shellac or a shellac look-alike product. Here's another one. Here's the label with the label on it. Um, and the reason you use this is two reasons. Number one. It is does not lift the grain. So let's say you have uh, you know a fine grain cabinet like maple or something mahogany or something like that, which I would probably never paint. I would definitely restain those. But if you did and you had the fine grain, when you go to put like a the aqua lacquer or in some places they actually still have lacquer based primer that does work pretty well, but. The problem is if you're putting water base over that, then the water base doesn't stick very good because some most states only have water base now. So a lot of them are getting rid of the lacquer. And the lacquer that you have, typically, um, if you're using like white lacquer to paint your cabinets, which, you know, we used to do many years ago, um, it turns yellow pretty, pretty quickly. So if you don't want them to turn yellow, then um, you're pretty much going to have to go with a water based product. So about the bin. The reason why I use it again is because it does not lift the lift the grain. Let me go over the other options. If somebody uses water-based lacquer, when you paint, when you paint over the wood, it'll lift the grain up. You'll see the grain. You'll have to do a lot more sanding. It'll be a whole lot more work if you don't use this product. So, and your finish isn't going to turn out nearly as smooth. So, first thing I do is I'll go ahead and prime everything with bin. When you use when you do the primer, this primer. 
you're also going to want to use a turbine sprayer to use it. I use something called a cap spray from, uh, and uh, you know, you can get any kind of turbine sprayer, but the reason why you want to use one of those is because you have to clean up with alcohol. So if you're putting alcohol through your airless, you're probably going to pick up stuff in your lines. You probably have to replace your lines and your packings when you're all done trying to clean it out because it doesn't clean out very well. So just for that warning there, um, I would definitely use a, uh, uh, an, uh, uh, the, the cap spray or a uh, uh, turbine unit. So the other thing is what I was going to say. Now, if you have grain, uh, like say you're using going over oak, um, and you have a lot of grain showing, you're going to want to use an additional primer on it. So you go over it with the Zinser, cover with this uh, bin product, and then you'll probably use, the one I like to use is from Vista Paint, but a lot of you guys aren't going to be able to get it. Um, you could use an Aqualac product over this, uh, as a, but use this as a bridge and then put the Aqualac, Aqua, it's Aqualac, Aqualac is basically a water-based lacquer, um, primer and you can use that and it's a more of a high build sanding product that you can put over that um, and again like I said if you're in a state where they still have lacquer you might want to use the lacquer primer and the lacquer finish um, but check into that yellowing situation you don't want your cabinets to turn yellow in, in just a few years it's a nice hard finish but it can turn yellow so now that you've got your cabinet doors outside and you've got everything primered with your bin shellac or your um, any shellac, it doesn't have to be bin or sensor, it can be whichever shellac there is, it's just uh, made from shellac beetles. So anyway, uh, you're going to need to caulk after everything's done. You'll see a lot of cracks in here. So like right in here will be an ugly looking crack. You'll have to caulk that in with painter's caulk all the way around it. You can either, either use the 35 year or the 25 year caulk. Um, DAP is a good brand or you know as long as it's at least a 25 or 35 year a lot of guys swear by only using the 35 year um, I've used the 25 and had no problems with it as well even in the corners of your shelving everywhere there's going to be cracks that are going to show up so keep that in mind you're gonna to have to do all that caulking after you're all done in fact when the doors are all outside you're gonna to have to tape off everything in here everything in here so that you can paint this very edge right here so you'll have all your doors off outside you'll have to tape off all the kitchen in fact when we do it we put up zip poles across and, and plastic draping all the way around the entire room every door and opening and cover the entire floor so that the dust doesn't build up um, so that when we walk away it's, it's like a fresh new clean look now now when it comes to finish, um, you want to make sure you use a premium water-based enamel if you're using water-based. Again, you don't want to get a cheap paint for your finish. Now, to be honest with you, anything I've seen at Home Depot is a production grade or middle grade paint. Like the bare paints are middle grade, they're not production. Like this stuff right here. Nah, I wouldn't use it on my cabinets. Anything with that name, I would stick with. Okay, Vista's Care Free Line, really good. Uh, Fray Z, which is no longer, but their Marrow Glide. You can go to Sherwin Williams and say, "What's the new product for Marrow Glide?" If it's still formulated the same, this is a very good cabinet enamel. Okay, in water base. Uh, Don Edwards, their premium. Let's see if I can have one. I think that one's, um, I think it's called Ever Shield. Their premium finish. They changed the name of it. It used to be called Permachine. You can ask them to pro cross the product over to the new one and say, I want the best stuff, the Permachine, whatever it came over to, Don Edwards. Um, Sherwin Williams, uh, you know their Promar stuff. It just doesn't doesn't meet my standards at all. It's a production or middle grade. It's not there. Um, maybe in their Super Paint line. I don't know. I don't use Sherwin Williams because I don't find their products to be that great. Um, 
And the sure the old phrasey stuff, the Merrill Glide was actually really good, but it's really, really thin. It has a really super hard shell, um, but you know, I'm not real confident in the other brands. Um, when you're looking at Benjamin Moore, if you get their Regal line, not the Ben, but the Regal line and their premium semi-gloss paint, that is a good paint too. Um, so I don't want to say only one brand, but um, I'd stay away from Home Depot I would or, or Lowe's or any of those places that's to hardware store paint, you know, go to a paint store. Don't go to a hardware store. They sell middle grades of paint. Go to a paint store and say, I want your premium line paint, the best stuff you have for my cabinets. You know, one of the lines, one of the companies will have it. Um, if, they're not, if, you, if they have a Dun Edwards, if they have a, a Vista paint where you are, if they have a um, Benjamin Moore, um, it's really expensive, Benjamin Moore is, but it, it is good paint. It's And it's overpriced for what it is, honestly. Um, but... Um, it is good paint. There's no doubt about it. You're not going to get junk. If you get the Ben, not the, not the Ben, if you get the Regal line, the Ben stuff is garbage. So just stay away from that one. Um, go to the premium line paint and put that on as your finish. Um, I usually use an airless to put on the finish. So the first part that you put on, you're going to put on with the turbine unit your primer then you're going to switch over to an airless if you're going to do a second type of primer on it and then if you're going to go to a to your paint you're going to be using your airless with a fine finish tip to finish the job so and that's the probably the only time that I'll use a double orifice tip and it's because I have everything controlled everything's you know I'm not worried about it everything's completely covered up so I can I'm more worried about finish than I am worried about the um, overspray at that point when I'm doing the cabinets because everything like I said the whole kitchen's covered up the whole floors are covered up the whole counters are covered up everything's completely bagged tight so anyway that's how you do cabinets and if you're wondering the two things you know if you're wondering why it's that expensive when you get an estimate if the guy does it the same way that we do um, that's why I mean my kitchens are you know I don't know I, I think the most, the cheapest cabinets I think we've ever done were like almost $3,000. And, you know, it goes up from there. So if it's a giant kitchen, just expect to pay a lot. But look at how much the new cabinets are. And, uh, you know, if it's done properly, you know, you cannot separate with a, you could use a sharp knife and you could not separate this primer from that, from the, uh, from the cabinet. So it's not going to chip off down to the wood unless you do something really, really, really awful. And it's not going to uh, separate from the primer to the paint if you use this method. Some guys will use a different method. They'll use another primer. There's other primers out there that work, but they don't work as good. Like they could use this here, this oil-based kills, and paint the cabinets with that. And... Uh, and then put the paint over that. But I can take my my pocket knife and I can separate the water base finish from this primer. So to me, you know, on a cabinet, that's not sticking good enough to me. This one, you can't. So anyway, that's just a little way to do your cabinets if you're interested in doing it. Um, uh, I do them in Southern California, but not very often anymore. But um, anyway, that's how we... We do it. I'll talk to you in the next video.